This is Conversations with Leaders. My name is Mark Schwartz. I'm an enterprise strategist with Amazon Web Services. And I'm talking with Robin Teslich, who is the Deputy Chief Information Officer for Cloud Transformation at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. So Robin, could you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role and the laboratory? Yeah, so Lawrence Livermore is a Department of Energy Research Laboratory. Um, we have about 8,000 employees and our, our primary mission is um, science in the name of, of national security and safety. Um, so our, our science missions focus on um, bioscience, weapon science, um, counterterrorism, uh, a broad spectrum of, of general science. And so we have a lot of physicists and engineers um, and my role is uh, for the last two years to help lead the transition for Lawrence Livermore to the cloud um, and get us migrated, instantiate a cloud center of excellence um, and help with that cultural change and transition. What is this transformation? What are you trying to do? What's driving it? Well, um, we've actually been dabbling in cloud for quite some time. Our CTO, Greg Herwig, um, has been pushing in this direction for a while, trying to lay the foundation work. Um, and in that process over the last five years, we've really seen some things that um, have been positive uh, outcomes of, of cloud technology that we thought we could take advantage of. And so specifically, we're looking for um, improved agility, um, access to innovation and tools that will help us innovate, um, and improved operations. Um, it, ironically, cost was not the, the primary focus for our motivation. Um, so we're really looking to just improve our operations and be able to be more responsive to the mission and the business. Um, and then another part of that is really enabling um, the science parts of our laboratory to give them access to all of that technology. Mm -hmm. So we're not only doing the transformation for our business side, we're wanting to deliver and broker that capability to our scientists and engineers to take advantage of it for their innovation and discovery. Got it. As, as you were talking, I was thinking, this, this must be pretty hard to do in a government setting. Are, are there like special challenges around yeah. government? I, I know the answer already, but, yeah. but please uh, tell our viewers. Two that come to mind are um, the, the compliance and security aspect. Um, you know, we have, uh, organizations that we report to. We're a Department of Energy contractor and they oversee uh, how we operate and, and we are stewards of the public trust when it comes to security. Our missions are somewhat sensitive. And so there's a lot of hurdles for us to get authority to operate in that cloud environment. Um, and because Lawrence Livermore has been you know, somewhat of an early adopter in the cloud space um, within the, dash, the Department of Energy, you know, realm. Um, we've had to kind of figure it out along the way and come up with our own processes for how we get that compliance approval in a, in a risk management framework. Um, the other I would say is around the finances. So, you know, the whole notion of cloud and elasticity and the ability to scale up and scale down and pay as you go yeah. does not work with the government form of funding and procurement, right? We can't just go use something and then pay for it later. We have to have all that procurement process in place. So it took quite a bit of effort to get, um, not an optimal process, but one that would work um, on the financial side. So security, financial, procurement, things like that. And as you solve these things, you're gonna be sort of a model for the rest of the Department of Energy, right? You're doing it first and, and hopefully everybody's gonna learn from you. In some ways, yeah, we try to learn from each other, um, specifically in the compliance space. Um, you know, the use of uh, FedRAMP and GovCloud, we had to go through and define a model for proving that we were taking the right approach to you know security and due diligence. And so having to go through that shared responsibility model where the cloud provider has a certain set of responsibilities and we have to investigate those and make sure they are you know, doing their part, not, not a complete review, but at least understand if there are any um, gaps there. And then laying on our customer responsibility on top of that and being able to document how we respond to that um, and how we're making sure those things come together to provide a secure environment. 
required a whole bunch of you know documentation and an analysis and then you know just getting uh, partnership with our um, our oversight office to help us work all, through all those hurdles um, mm. was a was a big challenge and it still is for our security organization uh, because Amazon and other cloud providers change very very quickly <laughs> right and yes. every time there's a new component that comes out we have to go through a mini process yeah. of assessing um, so it's it's not very scalable, but at least it's working for now. And mm -hmm. I think we're going to continue to try to improve upon that. Yeah, it sounds like the ideal would be if they could quickly do that assessment, right? If they could learn to be a little bit faster and more nimble with the security assessments as things change. Yeah. And and we've been working with, you know, our partners to try to figure out how to make that more automated and less cumbersome so that you know, we can get things to the users quickly, right? The people who want to take advantage of that technology. Some of the things you mentioned, um, the benefits you mentioned around procurement and, and so on, that does depend on bringing along the contracting people with you, right? It's not, it's not just a technology transformation. Yeah. It's really kind of influencing that procurement process and, and these other things to kind of get them in sync to actually take advantage of the transformation, right? Yeah, yeah it's procurement, it's finance, it's leadership. Um, you know, everybody has a different impression of what cloud is. Um, when you when you say we're going to the cloud, most people think you're renting servers, mm -hmm. um, and they don't understand what's the big deal and why would we do that. Um, and for many many years in our environment, we told people don't use the cloud. You know, cloud is bad. When you say we, you mean who, our cybersecurity. Cybersecurity, okay. Uh, which you know it was an IT decision and a and a cybersecurity risk decision because there are many clouds out there that are not safe and. We weren't able to go through those processes to ensure they were fed ramped or you know government compliant. Um, so we told our our user base stay away, mm -hmm. and then now we're saying we're all going, and mm -hmm. and it's a bit of a shock. You so it's taken a, a bit yeah. of of you know time to to show people what it is, what we've done to ensure that it is safe, mm -hmm. you know, and probably safer than we can do on our own. Um, and that it's the right thing to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, teaching people in contracts what it means to, to rent a desktop for a week um, is, a, is a, a mind blower for them. And, you know, it's, it's, we're still working that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, there are penalties in the government for spending more than right. you've been allocated to spend and so on. So it can make people really nervous not to know exactly how exactly. much they're going to be spending. And and we always get asked the question, you know, well, can't you just shut it off? If you hit the limit, just shut it off and, and make it go away. Which in you, theory. you can, <laughs> unless there's somebody's test results or scientific results there. And now yeah. the data is there. Do you want us to really get rid of that? And so it's complex. Right. But, you know, we're working through it. So did you like start with a, a big plan and then execute your transformation according to that plan? Or did you have to keep shifting gear? Did you learn things on the way and um, and make adjustments? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no plan survives reality, right? <laughs> yeah. So how did you keep that agility? How did you make it possible to change course when you needed to? Part of it was starting slow. Um, and, and figuring out those big roadblocks in advance. And that's what our, our CTO and a small team of folks had been doing for multiple years, trying to test out you know, different ways to control accounts, to control spend, to interface with our procurement systems and our billing systems and um, make sure we've got the right security guardrails in place. Um, but then when we decided to go, um, you know, we, first of all, we engaged um, the professional services for support and help. Um, but our plan initially was to go forward and migrate in a in a more refactoring approach mm -hmm. and taking all of our applications and, and getting there natively. Um, very quickly, we found that that was going to take us way longer. Um, and being in that in-between state of some on-prem and some in the cloud was going to be very painful. Um, so we shifted gears quickly on that one and decided to go lift and shift, followed by, you know, um, more optimization and refactoring. Um, so we've done that in three phases with our development environments, our QA environments, and then our production environments. Um, but really, I think it, it requires you to, you know, have kind of a plan and a vision and then um, 
really be willing to listen to people and take action and, you know, based on their concerns and try to come up with solutions that work best as a team um, and still get you, you know, that transformational shift you're looking for. Because um, we weren't going for just an incremental change, right? We wanted different. Yeah. We, we didn't want to just take our data center and move all of our processes and everything into the cloud. That's not going to get us the things that we laid out as objectives, our innovation and agility and resiliency. So it, it's definitely a day-to-day -day exercise in overseeing where we're going, how it's working, and adjusting. So what was it that caused you to go to the cloud in the first place? What started this transformation? Was there was there some kind of urgency for you? I think it was a slow progression. We, we actually started leveraging some cloud services a number of years ago, um, started off with our email, um, and then some of our um, customer support tools as SaaS offerings. Um, but as I mentioned, the, the CTO and, and a small team of folks had been investigating um, you know, cloud in general um, for a number of years. And, and I think the real trigger and the tipping point was when we started to see this huge value um, that you know, we had an application that we you know, initially had outsourced and you know, was costing us a certain amount of money and it was very rigid and difficult to change. And then we moved it in-house, which meant now we have a whole bunch of hardware and software to maintain and people to maintain it, which was even more dollars. Um, and then we moved that application to the cloud and successively over time as it got optimized and you know, refactored and, and natively produced in the cloud, it was providing better service, better scalability, better user, um, you know, context and experience, and a reduced price. So that was the first like aha moment for me. Um, second one was actually coming to reinvent, and and hearing all of the, the different companies and their successes, and it really became obvious to me that you know, there's no value in doing some of these lower level IT activities anymore, that to be competitive and responsive and, um, you know, be able to meet the needs of the future, we're going to have to, you know, I say stand on the shoulders of giants, right? When you move into the cloud, you're no longer doing things by yourself. You're leveraging all of the tools and innovations that are happening within a very large organization and being you know, tested and honed and refined by businesses all over the world. And, and you just can't compete with that. So you have to adopt it. Um, and, and that created a huge sense of urgency in me. It's like, we, we not only need to go there, but we're late. Um, so let's, let's get moving. Well, thank you so much, Robin, for being here with us. This has been really interesting. I've learned some things and I know everybody else who's watching this will, will learn a lot from it as well. Well, thank you.